Hello everybody, this is Blue, and this is going to be a very serious video, and so I need to give a trigger warning. I hate trigger warnings, but we're going to be talking about sexual assault in this video, throughout the video. And so if you are somebody that has experienced this traumatic experience, or if you are somebody that is easily upset by the discussion of this topic, you might not want to watch this video. It will be hurtful if you do. Rape, sexual assault is an illegal job. Is it? illegal it is a crime it is when somebody forces another person to perform a sexual act by some means um, in most cases it is using brute force or threatening to commit brute force I support the use of chemical castration on any and all people that are found guilty of sexual assault. Any means to prevent them from causing further harm, excluding capital punishment, I support. Unless, of course, it was to children, then if they hurt children, they have to kill them. That's my opinion. I saw a couple videos recently where they were talking about how bad it is to have this in role-playing games and that it should not be allowed in role-playing games and this bothered me because yes this is a bad thing very bad thing it is a reality um, if you don't want to in your if you don't want to have this in your role playing game that's fine you know but reality for most fantasy rpgs and for humanity is that sexual assault rape happens every damn day it is probably just as frequent as it was a thousand years ago and so I think that it is not realistic. I know that's a, sad to say in a fantasy game, but it's not a realistic idea to say that it does not happen. I think it is not very realistic to um, make it a forbidden topic. I believe that it is not realistic to ban any and all discussion of it. People got raped, people get raped. It sucks. Yes, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. But it happened. And it happens still. I feel that some of the, these videos are not by victims. I get the vibe from some of these videos that this is more of an activist talking and not somebody that is a victim talking about it. There are people out there, there are YouTube channels where people are using things like sexual assault to tarnish, to make things look bad, to make our hobby wrong, to make it evil. They are wanting to say that these subjects are brought up by people like me because I'm a white straight male and that I'm endorsing these activities and I'm not. As I said, it is an illegal act. I wish it wouldn't happen to anybody. Unfortunately, it does. I believe that if you are jamming or you are a player about to go into a new world, 
I believe that there should be a session zero. Uh, I have talked this over with other people, other channels, in which at the section session zero, you discuss what could happen in the game, what is allowed to happen in the game, what is not allowed to happen in the game. And so this is the best time to say that, hey, there is the possibility that this could happen or it's going to be mentioned in some manner in the game. Uh, there are going to be instances where, oh, let's just say, you know, a lot of things happen in taverns, right? So why not say, you know, there is the opportunity, the bad opportunity, where the dice are going to say that there was this drunk and he is going to grab a PC or a female NPC and do something wrong and find out if that's going to bother anybody. I think you should do it even if you are with people that you have role played with before, even if you have the strong circle of role playing friends, just to make sure that it's covered. In a section zero game, session, sorry, if a player wants to rape in an active game session, kick the person out. I believe that is, there are certain things that should not be allowed. Yes, we are going to kill in this game and sometimes, yes, it's going to be a murder. But that's kind of expected in the game. But if somebody is wanting to sexually assault a, a PC or an NPC in a gaming session, I would have them removed because what else are they going to ask for? Um, there are there have been many stories where there have been players who want to morbidly go into how they killed somebody and how they dismembered the person. There is a level of decency to be expected out of our players and certain things that PCs should not be allowed to do. It is my opinion that PCs should not commit sexual assault to anyone and that anybody that wants to hurt children in an RPG needs to get their butt kicked out the door. We don't hurt children. So, sexual assault rape can be put into the game as a backstory or telling the history of an NPC. And so, as long as it doesn't actually happen in active game play and you use, as what the little picture over there says, common sense and understanding, it can be applied. Um, and so we have to learn to use this unfortunate thing that is a part of humanity We have to learn to use it in the most sensitive way possible and realistic way possible. Um, I have a concept called hurt points. Um, if I'm having a PC that is part of their backstory is that they went through something traumatic, I mean really traumatic. They are given a piece of paper, they are assigned hurt points. And this is going to, um, kind of the guidelines on how they're going to act. 
uh, for the cases of rape, sexual assault, um, you know, yes, it's got to be high. And they are going to face events throughout their adventuring. Some might be triggering or some might be learning. So what we have to do, we want them to heal, right? And so we want them to have a character arc where they were once a hurt person and they faced adversity, they faced their hurt and they became better, they healed. A little bit about me, I actually work in mental health, mental health services. And so shunning this does not help. Uh, I work with my guys and I explain to them that they need to face their problems and learn how to make adjustments to get over them. Now this can be anything. This could be drugs. Um, they might have had a family member pass away. Um, so something that's causing them a lot of pain. You, you face it. Um, and that's one of the problems I'm having with the safety tools and all that is that there are people out there that they are not being healthy. They want the, the idea of sexual assault to be removed from RPGs. And like I said, if you want that removed from your game, go for it. But in a more detailed, realistic fantasy RPG, unfortunately, sexual assault is part of the darker side of humanity and other creatures, okay? And so with hit points, they are given a large amount um, in the two characters I'm going to be talking about in just a little bit. Um, they got 400 hurt points. They were capable of going up to 450. And so if things go wrong for them and they hit 450 hurt points, they leave the game. They are so distraught that they have to run away. They go into a panic and they could possibly hurt themselves, kill themselves, if it's a bad enough, you know, you're like, this is a solo role playing game that I'm talking about. And so DICE decided on a lot of things. And so as I need to get continue on here. So every day, no matter what, you can do it at the beginning of the day or the end of the day, I roll two D10s. As you can see, I got a green and a red. Green is growth. That's a good thing, right? Red is bad. So you roll the two dice together, and whatever you're, you have is what you take away or add to the hurt points. In the dice roll that I just did, I had a green 7 and a red 6. That's a plus 1. So we take one point away on the hurt points. Okay. Now as they heal, and hopefully they heal, they are able to see things differently. Their perspective changes. And they are able to move on. And hopefully um, through their course of adventuring and interacting with people, they experience events, they can heal, and they can get their hit hurt points down to zero. And when they do that, they've recovered from that event. It should take a long time. The story I'm going to tell you about took, in real world terms for me, it took two years. In gameplay, it that would have been roughly, I'd say, four years before, no, three years in gameplay before the female that I'll be talking about recovered. Okay, 
There are good days, there are bad days. There are going to be things that trigger, there's not going to be things that trigger. And so we do the dice rolls to help the, to see if they're recovering or not. Um, a little bit more thing, you know, real life here. Um, we have to come to terms with our pain. You know, there's a seven, tep, seven steps of recovery. You know, there is denial, hate, you know, compromising and all that. I believe that by shunning it, trying to remove it from RPGs, people are that have went through this and are using it, at, you know, saying that they need the the trigger warning and all. They're using it as a crutch, and they are refusing to face their pain. And so, what they're doing is unhealthy, in my opinion. And so, you know. I think that this actual role playing, if you need that trigger warning, you should not be playing any role playing games because this is a fictional character in a fictional world where these things never happened. Okay? If you cannot detach yourself from a fictional world, you are needing counseling. You are needing some therapy. You need help. Go get help. Okay? If you can remove yourself from reality and you can understand that this piece of paper is a fictional character and whatever happens to that fictional character does not affect you in the real world, then yes, let's play a role playing game. All right. Now I got to tell you a story about two characters. Uh, a couple decades ago, I was running an alternative history um, Earth, and this would have been, you know, no Roman Empire, but anyway, early Iron Age. And in the Belgium, Netherlands region, uh, this was a Celtic land. And so a lot of Celts, they traveled amongst all the other tribes and it was a good thing. But this up further north was an overlord, which is basically a magical dictator who was trying to establish power and to establish power, to establish fear, he was raiding villages and killing and ordering his men to kill everybody in the village, men, women, and children. Character one was named Maynor, the barbarian. Young man, probably 20 if I remember right. And he was out hunting for his small village. And he was out for most of the day. He came back and he saw his village was raided. Everyone was killed. He lost his village. He lost his family, his friends, his neighbors, the women, the children. Everybody was killed. He went through every hut trying to find a survivor and there was none. Women in his village were raped. It it devastated Maynor. And so Maynor became mean. He became hateful. He became spiteful. He had 400 hurt points. And his determination was he was going to go and find the bastards that did this. And he was going to kill every single one of them unless it killed him first. Okay. Next character. Her name was Kali. She was an entertainer. She was 18 years old. She was part of a tra traveling ensemble. And she was originally from the southern Iberian Peninsula, you know, Portugal area. And she was a dancer, a singer, and she could play the lute. And so she was part of, you know, a traveling entertainers. And so, instead of having the group meet at a bar, an inn, or whatever, they all met at this village that Kali was at 
that got raided. They killed every man and killed practically every child there and they raped and murdered women. If you fought back, you were killed. Khalid, being so young, so weak, she couldn't fight back. They left her for dead. She was devastated. She was hurt. And so she also got 400 hurt points. So the members of this group, eight members total, they met at this village. Kali was far away from home. She had no place else to go. And so the, the group brought her in. This is how she became part of the group. Um, she could do some cooking and that, but she was an entertainer. And so she was part of the group because she had no where else to go. And then there's Maynor, the barbarian. She hated all barbarians because barbarians are what did this to her. She hated Maynor. And so if Maynor got too close, it would trigger her and dice roll. Maynor saw Kali as the representation of all the good in his village. All the innocence, all the love, all the beauty, all the creativity that he saw in the village, he saw in Kali. He did not see her as a romantic interest at first. He had no desire to do anything physical with her. He decided that he was not going to let what happened to his village happen to her again. He was going to protect her. But she was easily triggered because this was a traumatic event. So when they went traveling, if they were to set camp, Kali's tent would be on the opposite side of Manor's. She did not want him around her. She hated him completely. And so they had to campaign to fight the Overlord because that's what they were wanting to do. The rest of the group wanted to do. Kali was just trying to survive and try to come to terms with what's happened in her life. And so they went through a few years of campaigning, fighting where they could, trying to make a difference. Slowly, Kali was seeing little bits of good in Manor, but because your emotions are so unstable after facing a traumatic event, you can go through the same ordeal or same smaller encounter while adventuring, and they can affect you differently. Sometimes, you know, it could be very hurtful. Sometimes it could be very good. Yes, she saw Manor going over with his battle axe and killing a raider. And one day, it's just like, man, he's just like all the other barbarians, just wants to kill and all. And then the next day, he could be doing the same thing, and it would be, he's protecting somebody. At least he's good for something. Same event, different results. All determined by the dice. So, there were events that happened. Um... Like I said, Maynor, he had to stay away from Kali. He kept an eye on her at times, but he knew that he had to walk on eggshells around her. And other people kind of kept an eye on him for her sake. And they know that Maynor wasn't going to do anything because for him, it was about undoing all the damage that this overlord and his marauders were doing to the area. And so one of the events was that they were noticing that he was hitting um, a perimeter of small villages. They figured out that it's going to be one of two villages. They were going to go there and they were going to kind of hide a little bit and wait 
for them to come and hopefully make a difference. Um, they had stone cottages with you know the thatch top. This is kind of important, and they, ha they had all of the women and children go in there, including Kali. And when you know the marauders were saw, and so they saw the marauders. We had a scout. She was good at this uh she saw what these marauders did to villages and that's why she's involved in this too um but so the warning was given out and all the women and children including Kali, went to this big center cottage stone cottage and the villagers they tried to protect it Maynor was out and about fighting and Maynor was based on a character i gotta add this just so you'd understand this. He was based off the wrestler Bruiser Brody. Bruiser Brody was six foot six, three hundred and some pounds, muscle bound. He was, you know, through with the Bruiser, meaning he was rough. He was gruff, and he had no problem biting people. He was a he's a barbarian. Okay, he had frenzy and all that skills. And so, while this raiding was going on, the two villagers that were protecting the door were killed. And one of the marauders opened up that wooden door, and he saw all the girls, and he smiled and laughed. And he decided that he was going to attack the women and children. Kali was triggered. She freaked out. Bad dice roll. And Maynor heard it. Good dice roll. Maynor went charging. He went in to the cottage where he know where all the women and children were at. He grabbed that marauder by the head and did the bruiser Brody, smashing his head into the stone wall, killing him. He then picked up his axe and went two steps out that door and he put his back to the door. Meaning that to get to those women and children, you were going to have to kill Maynor. And Maynor lived. Kali saw Maynor defend her. Defend women and children. So she started to see that there is some good in people, in barbarians. She thought all barbarians were crap. Now she sees that some aren't as bad. Okay, this is like healing in real life. It takes a while to realize if you're a woman and you were raped that not all men are evil. Okay. So things like this happened and Kali was starting to see a little bit of good in Maynor. Maynor just liked Kali because she was a singer and so it hearing her sing made him feel good it helped him heal um, another event now I use a hex board when I do my solo adventures and you know you got your NPC counters well I had NPC counters of women and children and then with male villagers and so then you toss them out on the map, on the hex board, to show where they were at. And then you let the dice roll determine what side the marauders were coming in. And this is important because in another village where the force was protecting a village, the marauders came in on a side and there were a couple of children close to the, where the marauders were coming in playing. And then they screamed and they were frozen in terror you know they're children you know seeing guys with axes and swords yes it's going to scare you Maynor saw it Maynor went and he was trying to tell the children to run and with his axe in hand he went into frenzy mode and he started to kill those marauders and he was just trying to tell the kids and that they were safe run Kali saw Maynor protecting children. This was a good thing. 
and she had a good role. There was a good mod modifier on there because Maynor was doing something wonderful. She healed and she crossed a barrier. Uh, there are levels of what you're, you could do if you're under so much pain. She grabbed her staff, that was her weapon, and she went running behind Manor, and she was protecting his back. She can't. She wasn't that great of a fighter, but she could parry with her staff to make sure that nobody could go behind Manor and hurt him. He was doing a great job. She was going to make sure that he continued. Manor is just grabbing his axe. He's swinging, killing, punching. He is in full frenzy rage. He is going to kill the motherfuckers that went to hurt little kids. During one of his turns, he saw that Kali had his back. And as far as I'm concerned, the most epic thing happened. Maynor had a role. This was an important event. And it was a good role. Maynor went out of frenzy. He was no longer in this angry rage. It wasn't no more, I'm going to kill you all because what you did to my village. It, he was out of it for one round. And then it was, this went to, he was smiling, he was happy. Because she healed. She trusted him. Now, she was no longer afraid of Minor. She healed and so Minor had this smile on his face. I'm going to kill you all because she likes me now. And I'm not going to let you hurt her. And so they both healed. The dice affected it. But the whole thing was about having both characters who were hurt in different ways to heal together. That they needed each other to become stronger, better people. And so they reached a level of healing that was awesome. And so Maynor was able to solely, he was still very respectful. I got to add this part to it. Maynor was still confused with Kali because you know he never was thinking of her in a romantic manner but this can change things he was not full of hate now he had happiness in his heart for a while and so he walked up to Kali who was helping you know people get bandaged up and all that and he was just going thank you for your help nice okay Kali, she healed and she was now seeing Maynor in this amazing light because he protected and he put his life on the line for others. He is not just not like other barbarians. He is what all barbarians should be like in her eyes. And so Kali walked over, gave him just a little kiss on the cheek. Thank you for all that you've done. This just made Maynor so darn happy, of course. Um, and so, yes, I had a little bit of fun, in a way, with their relationship. Yes, they still had healing to, get, to do. But in this, um, Maynor was able to get a little closer to Kali slowly. He was being very respected. And he loved to hear Kali sing. And because of the changes, it became more important to him. And it was part of his healing that whenever she got out her loot and sang in her tent, if there were people in between making too much noise, he would go out of his tent and it was basically, she's singing, shut up. Okay? Now, just because she healed at this level doesn't mean that she couldn't regress. She was an entertainer. She would go to bars, taverns, inns, or to a um, street auction 
you know, village square. And she would sing, hopefully to get a little money. This is one of their ways that they made money. And every once in a while, there was the drunk that had a bad role and did something really stupid and would trigger Kali, which would cause hurt. And then if she started to cry, Maynor got angry. And you know, Maynor does not want to see her hurt. And so he gets triggered, he gets hurt, and he gets violent. Um, uh, another little comical part. Um, there was one time she was at a tavern. was at a cavern, tavern, and she was singing. And there was this drunk, and he said that after the show, she, he was going to show her true manhood. This massive trigger, and Colleen and Maynor had an agreement. They could say. She was to, she told me or he could not hurt people for what they said. But if they tried something, he can do whatever he wants. But this guy, he made this comment that he was going to basically sexually assault her after she got done singing. And Kali just pointed and she was starting to cry. Maynor, of course, full rage, grabs the guy beats the crap out of him and two of his friends that thought they would join in. And after it, you know, Kali's going, thank you for what you do and you don't need anything for you. And then she made the comment, the human body is not meant to bend that way. And it just popped in my head. I still laugh about it because then Maynor just looks at Kali and just goes, his did. And so, it took, like I said, two years, almost four years in game time for them to complete this campaign of taking down this overlord. Once it was done, they were retired. Kali and Maynor went to the southern Iberian um, peninsula, again, around Portugal. And Maynor met Kali's family. They got married and they had children and died of old age. And that's how the story ended. Maynor needed Kali to help him heal. And she helped him in so many ways. Because of her, he wanted to learn to read and write better. He learned to control his temper. He took a little bit more care in how he was presented. He became a little bit more cultured. Kali, on the other hand, needed Maynor to help her get over the pain. She, he helped her get stronger. He helped her feel safe and he showed her that people can care without wanting to exploit them. And this helped Kali out a great deal. Uh, like I said, their story ended um, married with children and they died of old age. You can take an event like sexual assault rape and put it into somebody's backstory as a catalyst for events. You can put it in there and make it part of a story arc. You can have, like I did with Kali, her, her personal story arc was to recover, to heal, to go from a fragile, broken, scared young lady to somebody who could stand on her own. And so that's what made her such an amazing character. You know, with new face pain, you get better, you become stronger. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of movies these days suck is we have all these Mary Sues and we have ladies who do, who are 
like born perfect. They have all these abilities. You remember Star Wars and the what are they call sequel trilogy? You know where uh, Ray only had to close her eyes and all of a sudden she knew how to sword fight and all that. That was not character development. It was like she always was this way. You don't get invested into her. It's boring. And if it's boring, it's going to make the role playing game boring. Nobody's going to be invested into any character, any PC, if they don't go through some form of trauma. It doesn't have to be as devastating as a rape, but they need a little bit of trauma in some manner for them to overcome to become better. And so this is my opinion on how to use something as horrific as sexual assault rape into your RPG game, just remember to use some common sense and understanding when doing this. Don't allow it to be actively done in a gaming session. And you can create some very interesting characters. You could have, you know, it doesn't have to be sexual assault. You can have a young lady who saw her family murdered and being all alone in the world, kind of like what Clay was because she was alone for quite a while, and go through adventures, go through experiences, go through encounters, and become a stronger PC in her personality, in her demeanor, as well as physically and with her skills. Okay, so hopefully I didn't trigger too many of you. Uh, hopefully none of you are that mad at me. Please put your comments down below because I would love to interact with everybody on this. I, like I said, I think there's some people that have some bad intentions on this and I think it needs to be discussed. So for everybody else out there, take care, be at peace.